if you look at uh, cabinet uh, meeting announcements, which are held every week, there is a, uh, a recurring and, and continuous reference to the Arab Peace Initiative as being the only viable way to get peace uh, and a uh, Palestinian state with its capital in East, uh, in East Jerusalem. So uh, how, I will not speculate on, 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 on what that means, but uh, that is where the, the position of the kingdom is. I think the issue now, as, as before, is, is where Israel stands in all this. Uh, it's not the Arab side that has been not coming forward with peace towards Israel. It's the Israelis who have rejected the, the Arab uh, uh, outreach uh, to them that you mentioned uh, through the Arab Peace Initiative. And unfortunately, uh, I think uh, Mr. Netanyahu particularly has, uh, has uh, uh, I don't know how to put it, he has uh, definitely uh, been the main obstacle, if you like, uh, not only for the, the, the Arab uh, countries to come towards uh, some kind of uh, overall agreement with, uh, with Israel, but also uh, for the Israeli people themselves. Uh, as you know, the, Arab, the Israeli society now is, is, is is turning more and more towards the, the right, if that is the right conception, uh, the extremist uh, positions of the settlers and, and so on. And uh, Netanyahu has been the main, uh, the main uh, um, appealer uh, to, to these uh, forces in, in Israeli society. And we've seen the, the more reasonable, if you like, uh, as they are described in Israel, peaceniks, you know, sidelined politically and, and socially in, in, in Israel. So uh, as far as Saudi Arabia is concerned, and, and I've written about this in the past, uh, and um, uh, government officials have uh, uh, expressed uh, the view that uh, the kingdom is committed to the Arab Peace Initiative and will not change that position until there is a Palestinian sovereign state with its capital in East, in East Jerusalem. Uh, so we have not moved from that position in spite of what Mr. Netanyahu is, is throwing uh, either through innuendo or through, you know, smirk, smirk, uh, um, winks uh, at, at uh, um, particularly Western media um, that uh, there are contacts between Israel and Saudi Arabia, etc. So. Uh, uh, this is where the, the kingdom stands on that issue. Well, I hope there won't be a major change as far as the relationship between the two countries. Uh, the two countries have had a long-standing relationship and they benefited from each other. And uh, Mr. Biden is not uh, ignorant of the, of the importance of the relationship. He was vice president to Mr. Obama for eight years. Before that, he was senator in, in and knows the kingdom as much as, as any other uh, public official in America uh, is aware of. So, uh, uh, and what we've seen from, uh, from uh, writings that, that or, or statements that he made, that he recognizes uh, the importance of the relationship between the two countries. Um, there may be a change in complexion, if you like, uh, between uh, the kingdom and, and, uh, and, and uh, a Biden administration. But I can't foresee any major strategic uh, shift in that relationship, in spite of what is being um, uh, parlayed by, uh, by uh, either media or some so-called uh, experts on, uh, on the Middle East. I think for, for things to improve, there has to be a change in, 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 in function on a worldwide basis. And I think here, the role of the United Nations, uh, particularly the Security Council, is an important element to get it to improve its, its conduct. Uh, we've seen in United Nations Security Council resolutions uh, 
if you look at Palestine, if you look at uh, Yemen, if you look at uh, Libya, if you look at Syria, um, these are uh, resolutions that the, the world uh, committed itself to through the United Nations Security Council, and yet nobody within that circle of, 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 uh, of influence um, is uh, imposing implementation of those resolutions. So they, they, we have the, the verbal and, and, and uh, the, 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 the talked about effect of those resolutions, but not the implementation of those resolutions. Uh, so unless and until these issues can be resolved through the United Nations process, much of what is happening today, I think, will continue to happen. And we may even have new uh, issues that, that arise and people uh, who are uh, supposed to implement these resolutions don't implement them. And those they're supposed to be implemented against uh, feel that they don't need to, to implement them. I'll give you an example, yani the, the arms embargo on, on the Houthis in, in the Yemen, you know, resolution 2216 uh, of, the, of the Security Council imposed that embargo. Uh, and yet uh, Iran continues to supply the Houthis with, with weapons and other, other support and so on, willy-nilly, and, and, and uh, nobody uh, is doing anything about that. Uh, the arms embargo on, on Libya, for example, uh, and yet here we see Turkey not only uh, providing uh, weapons and, and support for, for some of the factions there, but also sending uh, militias to, uh, to Libya to fight uh, for them, not for the Libyans. So that is uh, something that, that has to be resolved. Of course, uh, if you talk about Palestine, resolutions 242, uh, 338, and other subsequent resolutions uh, are, are equally neglected and, uh, and not adhered to by Israel. So that has to be fixed for us to be able to solve our issues.